right now, let's keep it swinging and meet the Dukes of Dixieland. The Dukes of Dixieland. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Celebrating Culture. We're in Metairie, Louisiana, which is next to New Orleans, Louisiana, the birthplace of jazz. And we're at Moe Chalet, which is hosting the New Orleans Jazz Club, America's oldest jazz club. And I'm with Dino Asanto, whose family has six generations in Louisiana and goes back to the beginning of jazz. Dino, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having us. So tell me, your great-grandfather comes over from Italy. He came in uh, 1900. He had a degree in tailoring. He started Southern Tailoring down south and in Louisiana. He became a citizen in 1915. He was a musician. I've got photos of him playing in City Park in New Orleans. He played the piccolo. He had four children, and one of his children was Anthony Jacinto Asunto. Later on, he would be known as Papa Jack Asunto. Papa Jack got a degree in music. Also had a business degree, Tulane University as a matter of fact, and then he went back to school and graduated in 1949 from Loyola University with a degree in music. He then was the first music professor or music director of Redemptress High School back in the late 40s. And then his sons take it to another level. His two sons, Frank and Freddie, they both went and played music. Older guys were inside playing the music, the old style. Frank and Freddie were on this porch with all their young friends, all his teenagers, and they were speeding the songs up double time and just putting their own twist on the music. <laughs> High Fidelity, I believe, is associated with them. They started recording for Audio Fidelity in what was called High Fidelity back then. It wasn't mono, and I think November of 1957, Audio Fidelity recorded the first stereo recording in America six months before RCA did. So the Dukes of Dixieland, Frank and Freddie, Asunto, were the first musicians and band to record in stereo in this country. They also were recording in New Orleans with Cosmo Matassa. Yes, they, their first recordings were actually the old wax recordings at Cosmo Matassa's J&M studio, where Danny Barker played and Papa Celestine recorded there, all the greats, Fast Domino. The first early recordings of music here in New Orleans were all done at Cosmo Matassa's recording studio downtown in New Orleans. And then also Pete Fountain? Pete Fountain actually started with them in 1949 with the Horace Heights Show. It was a talent contest, a national contest that came down to New Orleans, and they put a band together that had Pete Fountain in it. What the boys used to do was, in high school days, and they would take a station wagon or a pickup truck, and they would paint it the color of the opposing football team that was visiting New Orleans. So that way, when they pulled up to the gate in order to get into the field, they would have their band playing on the back of this truck, and they would pretend that they were the visiting team's band. And so Pete Fountain was sitting up in the audience, up in his band was Warren Easton, he was in the band there. And when he saw these guys doing this, he went and introduced himself and jumped in the back of the truck. They became friends and they recorded one album together. It was called At the Jazz Band Ball, 1955, on the RCA label. They played on Royal Street. Yes, they did. 100 block of Royal. It was Tony Amarico's Parisian Room. And by 19 years old, they got into the famous door and it was supposed to be a three-week stance. ended up being three and a half years.
watching you guys, you guys are on tour basically in Louisiana. Yeah, we just got back last week for play the Elkhart Jazz Festival. You got through COVID by playing free for your neighbors. They loved it. Yes, they, they did. You played at Homeless House recently. Oh yes, we played a nice Homeless House for the St. Joseph's Festival. That was very nice, yes. That's right, the Dukes of Dixieland was once heralded as one of the best in New Orleans jazz. Today that legacy lives on through the next generation of the Santos and their tribute band. And they're with us this morning. And also, your niece is part of the band. Yes, that's the Alexia Santo. She is my brother Frank's only daughter. Well, she's a singer, and she's very, very good. It's, I guess it comes naturally to her because as a child, she was taught by Betty Owens of Santo, which for Betty Owens was a hillbilly singer back in the 40s. with Lexi Asanto, who's one of the best performers I've heard. Good Lexi, stuff. welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I see you seem like you're having a lot of fun performing and being the fifth generation of your family's band. I am, it's great. It's always a fun time up there and people love to see us keeping the legacy and the tradition alive. Now you have a great voice. Did you know you had a voice from your family? Um, I was always singing as a child. I grew up in my Aunt Betty's house, the Duchess of Dixieland, and she was always singing jazz and teaching me how to harmonize and do melodies with her, and just family reunions, things like that. But I was always a little, <laughs> I was always a little shy to get up on the stage, so it's been a nice little change of pace. I grew up with my Uncle Dino showing me all of these videos of my family performing and the coats. How does this come to be? So the story I hear is actually kind of funny. My Uncle Dino and our tuba player, Jim, were speaking about starting this tribute band. And they were going through some family members. I guess they were looking on for vocalists online. And somehow my profile picture came up. And Jim asked my uncle, he said, this is your niece? I mean, are you related to her? He's like, yeah, it's my niece. Does she sing? She used to when she was a kid. And so they gave me a call and asked if I wanted to come try out because he wasn't sure if you know, singing when I was nine or 10 in front of him was still gonna be great at 30. <laughs> kind of great work with the family still too, huh? Yeah, it's great. My Uncle Dino is wonderful. He's always kept the legacy alive for us and my siblings, and we've always known the history and have grown to appreciate it, so it's really wonderful being full circle and being able to keep it alive. You imagine one day doing a duet with your daughter? Well, she has actually come on stage a couple of times, and I mean, we do duets every day in the car, and <laughs> so she's a little shy though, like me, so maybe, maybe in the future? I don't know. <laughs> Lexi, I want to thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much. And you got a great tuba player. Jim knows his history, so before the songs, he seems like he lets the audience know a little bit about it. We are a group of musicians dedicated to playing, as Louis Armstrong would say, the good old good ones, the ones that Frank, Freddie, and Papa Jack played for so many years, not only on Bourbon Street, but on the Ed Sullivan Show, on the Tonight Show, on the Merv Griffin Show, on the Dick Cavett Show, on the Kate Smith Show. I know I'm forgetting another half dozen or so. 
but it's good, good New Orleans jazz music. We're doing more than just play the tunes. I mean, anybody can play a jukebox, you know. What he's doing is sharing the legacy, the musical legacy of Frank and Freddie and Papa Jack and Betty, the history of the Asunto family is part of our show. Is there a website? Yes, there is a website called the Asunto Dukes Tribute.com, and we have a Facebook page called the Asunto Dukes Tribute also. Dean, I want to thank you for being on the show. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Celebrating Culture. It gives me a great chance to see such young fellas playing a style of jazz that was invented, Frankie, long before you were born. How did you get this authentic New Orleans sound? Well, uh, Gary, being from New Orleans and uh, having a father who plays uh, some tailgate trombone, it came by us pretty easy. Dad is uh, with you tonight, isn't he? Oh, yeah, Dad's here. We'd, uh, we'd like you to meet him. Papa Hello. Jack. Hi, Hello. Papa yeah. Jack. How are you? Good to see you. <laughs> here you're going to hear some of the real New Orleans jazz. And just listen. Keep your ears open. This is Over the Waves, usually a waltz. And listen to the two trombones working together. The Dukes of Dixon. 